Hi and welcome to my latest video. Today I want to show you the LEGO Boost set 17101. It was released in the end of August 2017. To build, play and code with this set, a tablet computer is required. The Boost app runs on Apple iOS, Google Android and since a few weeks on a number of Windows 10 devices. A smartphone app should be ready until Christmas, LEGO promises in its online shop. With the set you can build 5 models. Of course Frankie the cat and Wernie the robot. There are also the Guitar 4000, the vehicle MIR4 and the factory Auto Builder. Some more inspiration you find in the end of the video. The box is nearly full. It contains 847 pieces in numbered bags. Instead of printed building instructions, you have to use the Boost app for building. Part of the new set is a new controller brick called LEGO MOVEHUB. It features Bluetooth low energy connectivity, two motors, activation button, internal tilt sensor and an activity indicator light. The MOVEHUB is longer and slimmer than the Mindstorm's main unit. You'll also get another small motor and a color and distance sensor. The color and distance sensor is a little smaller than those from Mindstorm's. The small boost motor is a little bigger than Power Function's M motor, but looks very similar. Biggest difference is the connector. Boost features a new, unique connector, which is not usable neither with Power Function system or Mindstorms. Maybe it will fit with Vido. As I don't own Vido parts, I can't tell for sure from the picture. Let's have a deeper look at Boost. I think nobody could do this better than LEGO designer Simon Kent. Welcome Simon. Hi, I'm Simon Kent, I'm the lead designer on LEGO Boost. Okay, so um, show us LEGO Boost. Yes. Explain what it is. So LEGO Boost is all about bringing your models uh, to life. Um, so they're, they're standard LEGO models, just like our, our cat here, made out of uh, normal LEGO bricks. And then we have some special bricks with motors and sensors in. Um, that through coding in an app can allow the kids to bring their models to life. So we can do that with the cat here. Uh, this is Frankie. Um, Frankie is our pet cat. And here in the app you can see uh, this is where Frankie sort of lives on the table with his tuna sandwich. If we click on Frankie, we then go into a number of activities we can do with Frankie. This top one is all about building Frankie and we've done that already so we don't need to worry about these. And now we've unlocked some other activities that we could explore. But I'm going to go into this area, um, which is what we call the free play for Frankie. And this contains all of the blocks that you accumulate through the experience. We can then maybe start a new project. And this one uh, is popped up here. And uh, we can then click on it. And then we go into what we call the coding area. And um, we need to turn Frankie on. So we'll connect Frankie. Um, and the connection is uh, Bluetooth, low energy. Um, and Frankie basically wakes up, so Frankie calibrates, checks his tails out, checks his legs out. And then here in the coding language you can see uh, what we call a number of tabs and we can just get Frankie to do some very simple uh, standing up and, and sitting down. Uh, and this is how the language works, so uh, it's all very icon based and uh, it basically you snap these blocks which are a command to a uh, play trigger and then if you press that Frankie does the, the activity, which in this case is just standing up and sitting down. So, Frankie also has a lot of sensor technology inside uh, um, of the hardware component. So in, in Frankie's mouth, he has a sensor and this sensor can see different colors, but it can also see a distance. So how far my hand is uh, from, from Frankie. In this case, we're going to uh, 
get Frankie to look for a, uh, a milk bottle. And this is a prop that you build as part of the experience. So it looks like uh, this. And uh, so the kids can obviously relate it to the icon for it. And then let's say uh, that we then assign a behavior. So down here in the blue tab, these are all basic uh, emotions that you can play out with Frankie. So from being tired and asleep, to eating a fish, to drinking a water, to showing some affection. And then if we turn this trigger on, and we show this, the orange to Frankie, then uh, the kids can play out a nurture kind of play where they're actually looking, uh, looking after Frankie, giving Frankie some milk. The other really nice thing about Frankie is you can set him up to be uh, very sort of hands-on and touchable. So we have these, uh, these triggers here, which are all about how you pick Frankie up. So if you pick him up uh, like this, then he reacts in a certain way and so forth. We can then assign behaviors. So let's say if we pick him up with his head upwards, uh, he shows some affection. If he's on his back, he goes to sleep. And then if uh, you pick him up the other, this way around, so by the tail, and of course you should never pick up a cat by the tail, then he reacts in a very negative way. So now if I pick Frankie up this way, you can almost give it a purr and he starts, uh, so this way giving a stroke and he starts to purr. If we then put Frankie on his back, you can, you can hear that he's snoring. And then if you were to pick him up by the tail, he reacts incredibly negatively, and you of course should then put him down and maybe give him a stroke and, and so forth. So there's lots of uh, ways that you can manipulate the model to react to how you interact with it um, through the code. You can set up the sensors to depict different kinds of emotions and behaviors with Frankie. Um, and then of course you can also go into the depths of getting his eyes to move and controlling the exact eye movement degrees and all of that detail as part of this experience uh, as well. What we could then do is move over to the guitar. If we, uh, we just disconnect uh, uh, Frankie. Right, so. And then we'll... And then if we go back to the lobby area and then we choose the guitar. And if we, we do this activity, so I'm gonna do a specific activity now. I'm not gonna go in the free play area. So this activity is about assigning uh, sounds to your guitar. The way that the guitar works is that there's a sensor here, and it's the same sensor that was in Frankie's mouth. But in this instance, we're getting the sensor to recognize distance. Um, so it knows how far this slider mechanism is on the fret bar, and then it knows that it's in the yellow zone, the green zone, the red zone, the blue zone, etc. And then in the app, you can see that these are then assigned a sound. So the yellow block, uh, is gonna be a guitar sound of the note C. So what we can then do is then, if we pick up the guitar and put it in yellow and press this, oh, let's turn it on, of course. Put it in yellow and, and then do the trigger. It will play the note C. If we then go to green, it does a bit of violin. Red, it's scratching. Then a little bit of beatboxing and a a fart. What you could do, if you wanted to, is then assign all kinds of different sounds to this, so we can get rid of all of these. And let's say we want to, if we go back into here, we want to make it um, the an actual real guitar. So we take all of these, then we can change these notes. Like so. And then if we press this, you can then actually play a song. And I'm not a guitarist, but it, it's fairly easy for the kids to, to then pick it up and, and play, play a song. Another activity which I, I do want to show, which is a lot of fun, is that in later parts of the experience, when the kids learn how this works, they can then set up a, a basically a backing track to play along, alongside. So in this activity, there's going to be a, a basically a bass rhythm that plays um, by the, the tablet plays it, and you don't need to worry about it as, as the child. And then you play on top of that. So if we press play now, you'll hear the bass rhythm, and then I can you can change that just by sliding this to the different different notes. And then if I then press the trigger, it will play on top of that. Of 
course, you have to maybe play around with getting the timing right, but you can actually play a song. The kids could then say, well, maybe I want to add a drum beat to this. And in, uh, in this orange uh, tab here, or palette, you can see we have a number. Of, these are basically time signatures. So we could say on one, uh, one per beat, we want to have the bass drum. And you can even just try that out. So that's it, the bass drum. Then we want to have uh, the snare drum. And then we change, put the, the bass rhythm back on. And then if you get the timing right, it can actually sound pretty good. And there you go. So you can actually start to make a little song or a performance for your, your friends or your family. You could even actually record your own voice into this, so you could have like a a uh, 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 part of this where you're singing um, as a backing track or whatever. Um, so as a sort of a creative tool in, in with the guitar, what's really nice is you're actually being music, musically minded, which of course is something that maybe Lego doesn't normally focus on. Um, so the idea that's really nice with the guitar is it's much more hands-on, you play with the model, but then you're also being creative with it, you're creating music. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Simon. And while I'm building Frankie, you can watch some cool ideas from the LEGO Boost advertisements. The Master Marvel Mover! The Launch Launcher! The Masterpiece Maker! The Mega Spy Box! The Paddlebot 3000. And what do I think of Boost? I like it. The set contains very different parts and many nice colors. Building and programming with the app is easy and intuitive. I think it's suitable for smaller kids and it's a very good start into coding. If I had kids, I would buy the set for them for sure. Not so good. It's once again a new electric system for LEGO and it's not usable with the other systems. So adding further sensors and motors is not possible, neither using those from Boost with power functions or mindstorms. Thank you for watching. If you liked my video, just give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Looking forward to seeing you next time again. Bye.